Hi, I'm Dr Pippa Watson and I'll be demonstrating shoulder examination. It's important to start with your patient's shoulders exposed and we're going to inspect from the front, the side and the back. Starting with the front, I'm looking particularly around the front of the shoulder for any signs of visible swelling. I'm also looking for scars and any asymmetry, particularly in terms of muscle bulk. Can I ask you just to turn on the side? So again, looking for any scars and just round to the back for me, please. And this is a good position to look at the symmetry of the muscles. Next, I'm going to feel the joint for temperature with the back of my hand. And then I'm going to palpate the bony landmark starting at the sternoclavicular joint. I'm working my way across the acromioclavicular joint. I'm going to feel around the joint line. I'm just going to continue around the back here, just palpating the bony landmarks. I'm also going to palpate over the muscles, just feeling for any tenderness. Shoulder movement and function can be assessed by asking the patient to put their hands behind their head and behind their back. Internal rotation can be given a measure by how far up the back the hands can go, in this case to the lower thoracic level. If not, it's useful to quantify the deformity as mild, moderate or severe. I'm going to ask you just to turn back round again. We're now going to test movements. It's useful to do these both actively and passively. So active is when the patient's doing it themselves and passive is when you do it for them. This is useful because if there's a difference between active and passive movement, so if active movement, for example, is difficult, uh, that may indicate a problem with a nerve, a tendon or a muscle. So we're just going to start off with some active movements, if that's OK. So if I can ask you just to take your uh, shoulder back as far as you can. That's great. And then bring it right up towards the front. Thank you. So that's flexion and extension. And then if I could ask you to bring your arm down and then up and out to the side. And again, keep that going right up to the top. So now just going to test some of those movements passively. So just aim again if you just let your, let your arm go nice and relaxed. Just going to move that back. And then up and out to the side. So abductions a useful movement. Here I'm looking to see whether their patient has a painful arc and that can be indicative of a rotator cuff problem. Markedly reduced external rotation with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees and tucked into the patient's side is very suggestive of a frozen shoulder. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to test the patient's scapula movement. So if I could ask you just to turn to the side, that's great, thank you. I could ask you just to um, do the abduction again, so just lift your arm up and out to the side, all the way up to the top, and then back down again. That's great. I'm just going to do that again with my finger on your scapula and if you just could go up for me and then back down. And what I'm doing with that is I'm just checking that the scapula isn't moving too much during the movement to compensate for a lack of movement within the shoulder itself. Function has already been assessed by asking the patient to place their hands behind their head and behind their back.